Okay, uh, good evening everyone. This is the uh, planning board meeting of January 28th, 2020. Um, if we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, first on the agenda tonight, we have an A&R. And I think this is the A&R we had at our last meeting that didn't have a locust map on it. It's uh, 366 uh, Tremont Street. It's uh, map 128, lot six, uh, Christie and Scott Kendrick. And we have uh, a discussion and possible vote tonight. So I think we're just gonna s just sign it as long as uh, Locust map is on. Right. This is the one with the locust map. All right, so, the, so what we have in our package is. Uh, <laughs> is without locusts. Okay. It's pretty <laughs> fancy, right? How many, uh, yeah, we get, we get the additional copies. Uh, yeah. We got, how many copies do we have? We have to we take a vote to yeah. endorse, right? Oh, we'll no. make a motion to endorse the uh, form A. <laughs> That's right. As it now has the proper stuff on it. Okay. For um, 366, Tremont 366 Tremont Street. That's right. We didn't approve It's it. a motion to endorse. I'll second that. And a motion to second. Further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we'll so need, we'll need to sign all of them, plus the mylar. Does Kelly sign or no? Uh, not Kelly. No. No. I think you get them right here. Yeah. Is uh, Jen holding them? Oh, sorry. Hmm? No, I just <laughs> handed everybody one in case they wanted to see them. <laughs> oh, we got another one. Okay. Wait, this one, too. do we need this one too? Is that the one with the locust map on it? Next, we have uh, 
And we were, we had talked about this, I think, in our previous meeting, the approval of a real lot, and this was on Forest Street, mass, map 50, lot 8. Um, tonight we have it before us for a discussion and possible approval of the real lot. And um, as soon as Jim gets back, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the... <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Have a great night. You too. Good evening, Sarah. Good evening. We haven't seen you for a long time. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see all of you. <laughs> Thought she was avoiding us. <laughs> I was not avoiding you. It's my favorite place to be on a Tuesday night. We missed you last time. I know. Your, your fill-in was awesome. Good. Just so. Good. She's great. I had full confidence in her. Oh, that's right. Yeah, before you take it out, we got to uh, date that too, and the coffees. Good pickup. I'm <laughs> sure you don't want to take up more time than you need. <laughs> want a position on the planning board? Not at this time. Thank There's you. one available. I'll I'll think it over. 128. 128. 2020. We keep the copies so those can be dated. Those will, those will also have to be dated. dated. Unless somebody put the date on. And I didn't put the date on. So. The Mila has to go to the registry, so. Thanks, Joe. That's great. Thanks. All right, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Sarah, sorry to interrupt you. No problem. Good evening, everyone. For the record, Sarah Stearns with Beals and Thomas. Um, this is a public meeting as opposed to a public hearing. And a, um, as Will mentioned, my colleague Stacey Minahan was here um, at the last meeting to discuss the classification of a rear lot. Um, there were a couple of action items that came out of the last meeting. Um, and just to kind of recap, the um, property is made up of nearly 160 acres. It's agricultural land. It has um, 60 feet of frontage on Fuller Street. And um, we have been speaking with the town planner, the building commissioner, um, the ZBA, and now the planning board. And if you remember way back, we talked informally about this just to try to discover a permitting path that would make sense for a potential solar array on a portion of the bogs here. Um, we have been combing through the zoning bylaw and specifically section 2340 regarding rear lots and feel that this particular site meets the definition of rear lots. We've gone through the provisions uh, the multiple provisions, and I know that Stacy went over them with the board at the last meeting. Um, one of the points that we needed some clarification on, I believe, was um, access versus frontage. Um, I think, you know, to be completely honest, the bylaw is a little bit vague in, in terms of whether or not these solar projects really fit the definition of needing frontage for these projects. But since there's a little bit of amb ambiguity and discussions with the building commissioner, you know, we're taking a conservative approach to, con you know, to confirm that there is a permitting path going forward. Um, so really what it comes down to, and I'll, I'll flip the board over. I'm sorry, this is a little mangled from my car, but this is the property as a whole. Everything's in Carver, but it's close to the Middleborough town line. The bog one and bog two are the areas earmarked by the landowner, Mr. Johnson, um, for a potential solar array. Um, <clears throat> the frontage is on fo uh, Forest Street on this side, but the existing <coughs> access is off of Fuller Street, something that's been used for generations for the cranberry operation as well as earth removal. Um, 
the preference would be to continue using the existing access off of Fuller Street. Um, in speaking with the landowner, the um, if the project were to move forward and potentially be approved, a deeded easement would be um, formalized for the life of the solar array to make sure that that's on record. Um, Forest Street does not provide the best access, although it is possible to put an access road where the frontage is. Um, there are numerous reasons not to do that, but given what the board talked about with my colleague at the last hearing, we just put together a, a very simple exhibit which shows the area <coughs> off of Forest Street where the existing frontage is that we could put um, an access and we just used the um, Carver Fire Department dimensions for this layout. 12 foot wide road with two foot shoulders on either side. So it's essentially a 16 foot wide road, which is what's shown here. Could we do it? Could we come in off of Forest Street? Yes, we could build that. Would the abutters be happy? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's not the best access point. And you know, going back to what the bylaw says, yes, that's what the bylaw says. Put, put an access road where your frontage is. But um, you know, we just wanted to show the board that that could be done. And this is just a, a schematic overlay of where the um, proposed solar array would be on those two bogs that I pointed out on the other exhibit. So that's really just what I wanted to show you. That's the only kind of new development that we, you know, we took what the board said at our last uh, meeting together and just wanted to formalize that a little bit just to show that, you know, strict adherence and compliance with the language of the bylaw could be done. Um, you know, I would think that if the board is in agreement that, you know, we've met the criteria in section 2340 for a rear lot, we would proceed with our typical site plan review, special permit, design and permitting path. And I would think that, you know, we could certainly show that as a potential access and then just go through all of the reasons why the landowner and the applicant would prefer to keep the access off of Fuller Street. And if anyone's been over to the Fuller Street access, I mean, it is like a highway. Um, I spoke with Jesse Boyle since you last met. Um, he had already driven out there at my request just to take a look at it so I could get his initial feedback. Um, I think his comment was that it was a robust uh, road and they had no access issues from Fuller Street. Um, I did ask him just to kind of elaborate on you know, whether or not Carver Fire had any interest in looking at a, an access from Forest Street. And he sent over a brief memo today, really just corroborating what I'm talking about, that the access off of Fuller Street would certainly be preferable to Carver Fire. Um, so you know, I just want to make sure I'm being clear with the board about that. In our discussion with ZBA, we had also spoken with a couple of Forest Street abutters um, that came concerned about a potential access over here. And I said the same thing. We have no plans, no intention to do that. We do potentially need to show that it could be done just to you know, reassure, that, reassure the planning board that this is a viable option if, if push came to shove and we had to do that. So that's really all I wanted to touch base on tonight. Um, I'm happy to go through the provisions of the rear lot definition and show how the, we feel the site meets that definition and really for the building commissioner to um, proceed with what we're talking about, he just needs um, agreement from your board so that we can proceed with a real design um, and really kind of get into the nuts and bolts of an actual application. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Jim, would you like to uh, <clears throat> add anything uh, further? Sure. So in, in your package, you have a memo from, uh, a rise memo from Bob Francis, the building commissioner, as well as uh, should have a letter from uh, Jesse Boyle of the fire department in there. And so over the last 10 days, Bob and myself, when we met with um, Bruce, the chairman, and had discussions about this. 
And so we went and we took a look at the definition of frontage and the kind of the key phrase mentions direct access to a building site. So we said, okay, well, what does that mean? So we went to the definition of building and in essence that's defined as it's more or less a habitable structure. It's supposed to be a residence, a hospital, or a educational facility, a retail use. And, and then a structure is something like a solar array. So, uh, so, you know, we have other locations in town where we have access, you know, the, we have other structures such as, you know, telephone towers and uh, we have uh, uh, pertinent uses on cranberry bogs, you know, the pump sheds uh, that don't have frontage on a, you know, way, they're all structures. So I think, so, you know, just to make a difference between what a building is and then what a structure is, a structure requires, you know, kind of a direct access to it. A uh, building requires direct access to it, you know, from a road frontage. Um, so Bob looked at that and he, he agrees that, yes, uh, you know, he doesn't see any problem with, um, you know, this being approved as a rear lot because, you know, there's another access way in there uh, that the, you know, uh, it's already been approved at a fire department, but when the project is, uh, is being reviewed, the fire department would also have to look at that requirement for, front of, uh, for access to the solar site. So that's what I have. If anyone has any questions, I'll try to answer them. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. through you to uh, Sarah. So I thank you for doing exactly what I was looking for because now, in my opinion, you meet the requirements of the rear line. Because can an access be made from the forest street? Yes. And that was the hang up. Okay. So now you You're welcome. In the opinion in the opinion of the bylaw, you meet the requirements of a four may law. I mean the rear rear lot. So that's what I was looking that's what I tried to get through okay. last time. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for <clears throat> any of the planning board members? Not a question, but a comment. I, I see Will's point, but like you said, the bylaw says the access road needs to be where the frontage is. So you can put one there, but without it being there, it doesn't seem to meet the bylaw. So in this case, this might be an example where the bylaw should be looked at and changed since solar is new. Um, and I think this might be an issue better served by the ZBA because it was in front of them, they had questions. Because without that access road being there, technically it doesn't meet it, so it should be looked at. Well, I think the argument against that thought is, and not that it's not a good thought, and that's exactly what the bylaw says, um, is that we're not, there's not a, uh, Building being put on the on the project, it's a solar panel project, so it's a different animal. But um, so I think it meets all the qualifications for a solar project. But yet I've discussed this with Jim too, and we have to look at the bylaws um, because there are a lot of places where uh, bylaws need to be looked at and, and possibly changed for solar projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I understand what you're saying. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Jen, I can also add to that. In our discussion with the ZBA, so we would go to ZBA if there was no way to find a permitting path. I mean, everyone's preference is to find a permitting path that can comply with the bylaw through your special permit and site plan review process. That's, you know, going to the ZBA for a variance is definitely not the preferred path. And you have to meet very specific variance criteria. Um, so when, once we started talking about it with them and realized that there was a better permitting path, even if you know, we needed to request the board to exercise some discretion on something like this because it was the logical thing to do, if we could show that, yes, it is buildable, but because we have a much better alternative for ecological reasons, abutter reasons, safety, uh, emergency safety reasons, all of these things that we can tick off, it's a much better option and gives the planning board an alternative that is preferable. So 
in my understanding and talking to the ZBA, um, which who sent us back to you, I, we still have an open and pending case with them, depending on this discussion. So our preference would be to permit it as we have done with all of the other solar projects that we've talked about together and you know, talk about the different options. As long as we can meet this rear lot criteria and then talk about options within that with you with, as the board, as a regulatory authority, I think that is a, a preferred path. Um, we would like to do that, the applicant and landowner would like to do that. It makes much more sense. I think it's better for the project, it's better for the town, and we would prefer to withdraw our petition for variance. Mm -hmm. I just had a question on the, regarding the memo from Bob Francis on the second page and second paragraph. It is my opinion that the sole project does not, have, does not have to have frontage as defined by the zoning bylaw so long as that is adequate access approved by the Copper Fire Department. I, so what is that? I mean, it has to have frontage, solar project. And it does. Okay. In, in so this, just, in, in and it has enough. So the rear yeah. lot provision for frontage is 40 feet. So you just have to have at least 40 feet of frontage. You don't have to have the zoning district 150 feet. This project has six, this site has 60 feet, so we meet that criteria as far as the rear lot provision is concerned. Um, I, I don't want to put words in Bob's mouth, but his interpretation it seems like of the bylaw, which, like I said in the beginning, it's ambiguous whether or not solar. And I know it's a sensitive topic, so we don't need to get into that whole discussion. But um, I think that's a section of the bylaw that could as Mr. Chairman was saying, could use some clarification specific to solar. There is frontage on this project. It's not. There is. Right. There's there is. linear feet frontage of 60 feet where mm -hmm. 40 is required. But then, you know, if you poke into the, you know, the definition and the bylaw, what, you know, the whole definition of frontage is includes this direct access to a building site requirement. And so, so would changing the access road affect the frontage? Changing it. I mean, putting it off of. Um, we're not, uh, nothing we're proposing will affect the frontage. Okay. Yep, you still have the 60 feet that you already That will remain as it is today. Okay. I thought that was kind of interesting wording. Well, I think, you know, in discussions with the, <coughs> with the building department, uh, uh, he, his thoughts are that a solar project uh, didn't need frontage, whereas a couple of years ago, the, the person that was doing his job said that you needed frontage. So, um, but that's what we have to look at this. I mean, a lot of these uh, bylaws, and it's, I mean, it, it happens <coughs> everywhere in every town. I mean, it's even happening in government today. Uh, you know, there are gray areas and everything, so you, you need to interpret it, you need to look at it, you ha need to uh, think, uh, you know, how it's going to affect the neighborhood and, and everything else. And, and I think in this particular case, with the neighbors not really wanting a road up there anyway, there's no building that's going to be built out back there. If, if there was a building being built back there that needed access daily, then this would be another discussion. But when you're just gonna have a solar project, you're gonna have vehicles coming uh, through the back of uh, the property uh, to build it, then there, aren't, there isn't gonna be daily traffic going there every day. So if you just kinda, it, and whereas a, a driveway could be put through there, um, there are some wetlands there. So the wetlands would have to be moved and changed or a bridge would have to go over the wetlands. So in, in my mind, you gotta figure what, you know, how, how is this gonna, what's the benefit here? You know, is it easier to go through the property in the rear and then leave the linear frontage as it is? That's not gonna change. And it's not gonna disturb the wetlands. It's not gonna disturb the neighbors. So I just think that in this particular case, it's a better way to go. So, Mr. Chair, if I may. So the question in front of the board is whether or not we think that the property in question is a rail lot. Mm -hmm. And 
not looking at a solar development or anything else like that, but the question is whether or not it meets the requirements of a rail lot. The thing that was hanging me up on that was proven to me whether or not they can get access off of um, Forest. Forest Street, which they did. Mm -hmm. So under the bylaw, they meet all the requirements of a rail lot. Leave the solar project out of it, leave the uh, development out of it, all that. Does it meet the requirements of a rail lot? That's a question that you got to ask yourself. And, and per the zone and bylaw, it does. Mm -hmm. now, if, now, if we make that determination that it is a rail lot, then they decide to come in front of this board to do a project. It'll be up to them to determine whether or not access is going to come off of Far Street or access is going to come off of the other street or how it's going to be in the best interest of how it's going to be used. Mm. But that'll be, that's a total different discussion inherent than what is being asked of this board now is to determine whether or not it meets the requirements of a yeah. form A lot. I mean, a real lot. I'm good. <laughs> I was just reading the form A. <laughs> that's my four cents worth. All right, do we have to vote on this? Or, uh, I guess we're going to have to just to see what the opinion of the board is. So I'd make a motion to um, define this, this uh, Forest Street Map 50, Lot 8, as a real lot, as a de determination from this board as a real lot. That's my motion. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? So we're just voting on, is this considered a rail lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Period. That's it. Yeah, it has nothing to do with any potential, maybe could be project or not. Gotcha. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. And further discussion? Okay, those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. So it's Three to one. Or four to one. Oh, did uh, I would vote because Kevin's not here. Oh, that's right. Kevin's not here. Kelly's voting and Kevin's not here. Oh, but this is not a, not, not a, not a special, special permit. Special permit. Oh. Mm -hmm. No. It's all right. So, it's three, she, can, she can fill in, yeah, three to one. Yep. You can fill in on the special permit cases. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Just special permit, votes. yeah. Trying to get us some votes. I love it. <laughs> so three to one, that is you an agreement. An agreement. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, next we have a bunch of uh, public hearings uh, on uh, solar projects and some are, are to be continued and some we're going to hear tonight. The first one is uh, on the application of Borrego Solar Systems and this is on uh, 19C Ward Street. And could you just inform us what's going on with this project, Jim? Sure. Please. Um, They've been trying to schedule a meeting with the abutters, and uh, so they thought they were going to have a meeting last week, but then that got canceled, so they're still working on setting up a meeting. So they requested a continuance until uh, the next meeting, which, excuse me, brain, which I think is uh, the 11th, February 11th. Yeah. Mr. Chan, make a motion to continue the public hearing for Borrego Solar Systems for 19. C. Ward Street, uh, February 11th at 7 o'clock. I'll second. <coughs> Oops. Uh, we have motion and second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. All right. And then uh, next we have an application of renewable energy. And uh, this is Zero Pond Street. So this one we're going to hear tonight. Yeah, we're here. 
Okay, so I'll just read this. On the application of renewable energy so that the public has a, a better understanding of what we're working on here tonight. The, on the application of renewable energy development partners, LLC requesting a special permit and site plan review pursuant to sections 2230, 3100, 3580, and 5300 of the Carver Zoning Bylaw, its assessors map uh, 107 lots 1-4 to allow the construction of a large-scale ground-mounted solar photovoltaic installation located at Zero Pond Street, Carver, Mass. The project consists of a solar energy facility that includes two components both located on a portion of the plus or minus 560 acre Swan Holt Bog complex owned and operated by 80 Make Peak Company. The two project's components include uh, plus or minus uh, three megawatt agricultural canal solar canopy and a plus or minus 1.4 megawatt dual use ground mounted array in a residential agricultural district. Good evening, Sarah. Good evening. <laughs> For the record, Sarah Stearns with Beals and Thomas, Hank Rimet and Tom Mel Melihan from Renewable Energy, whatever it is, Development it's Partners. It's a long <laughs> name. Um, <laughs> so this is our third hearing. Um, I do have smaller versions for you guys if you would like. Sure. You want the little ones? Okay, so just for the record, I just handed Jim um, some revised plan sheets um, as part of the set that, we're, that we have been submitting and revising as per our, yeah, as per our um, peer review with Bus and O'Neill, comments from the board, comments from abutters, everybody's comments. So this is a small version. I love it. Easier. Small yeah. ones are better. It's harder to read, but it's easier to turn the pages. Yes. So, <laughs> I got the big one. I can see that. Um, <laughs> right. um, I also I have, the whole. <laughs> so um, what's on the big board is what I'm going to give you too. Um, and that's this for Jim's file. Um, they're giant, so don't do anything like that. They're brutal. Um, but, <laughs> And again, not easy to read, but at least they're functional, so we can go through them. This is what we put together for the abutting properties and the cross sections from all the abutters on Bunnies Road and um, Bow Street that would have um, a, at least a partial view of portions of the array. So um, the last two pages in this second set that I just handed out are the most useful for this discussion. Um, that's the overview for the last page, rather. Oh, last two pages. Um, that's the overview of the section that we've been kind of focusing on uh, related to the dual use ground mounted array in the northern part of the property closest to the Bunnies Road area of the adjacent lands. <coughs> and then the southern piece and you, you can see by looking at this, um, the cross sections are in pink and they just correlate to the earlier pages. So um, just to kind of go over that a little bit since this has been the focus of the last few discussions, um, the applicant has put a lot of effort and time into achieving 100% 100% screening from the adjacent properties. And we know from being out there, those of us who went out there, that even the homes that are the closest or, or most visible from, our, from the project site have an obscured view. But even that was important for the applicant to make sure that we did everything that we possibly could to achieve 100% screening. So the changes that have been made since we last talk, as I talked is that we have added um, additional plantings in some areas and we've added berms um, in kind of the key areas where there was a partial view, um, seasonal view, because this is the time of year, really the only time of year that some of that view shed is a little bit open from some of the areas. The other um, change, significant change in terms of screening is that the end of the canal canopy um, down by 42 through 48 Bow Street has been removed from the proposed project. 
Um, you can see in green on the large scale map, that's where the berms have been added. Um, and on the cro correlating cross sections, you can see now a little bit better from that view how the grade has been enhanced where needed. Um, in some areas, a topographic relief already lended itself well to screening, as well as the plant, as well as the existing vegetation. But we've added material in a couple of key areas just to ensure that um, those views will will be completely hidden. So those are kind of the couple of changes that you see in the plans that I just handed out. Um, we've also gotten a final review memo from Fuss and O'Neill. No outstanding issues. Essentially, it was just a list of suggested um, conditions um, for the decision to incorporate if the board does, um, sh chooses. Um, I don't know if you recall, but uh, Carver Fire had issued a memo early on. Um, they weren't able to get through the gate to look at the access points, but um, again, per my request, Jesse sent a second memo. Um, again, no access issues. Um, there is a small access road proposed as part of the ground-mounted array, which has been designed within the um, Carver Fire dimensional requirements, so no issues there. Um, I think his only comment on the road, the access road from Wenham is that some brush need, would need to be trimmed just to make it fully accessible. It hasn't been used for a long time, so it just sort of grown in. But in terms of the um, driveway itself, um, no issues there, and he um, put that in his memo. So that was really kind of what has come of that discussion. Um, one of the things that was discussed at the last heat hearing um, specific to the resident at 48 Bow Street, which um, that butter I think was here at the last hearing and, and we have spoken to him, um, we were requested to tag the trees slated for removal down near that property for the shade management associated with the canal. That was done the following day after our last meeting. Tom went out and met with him, um, tagged the trees, tagged where the revised end of the canal would be, and added a 14-foot post out where the canal is proposed so that that could be viewed from that abutting property. And Tom, if you want to talk about your discussion with him, I wasn't there, so I don't want to uh, put words in your mouth, but from the report, it sounds like that neighbor was pleased with all of those items that were done. And if you want to add anything else to that, certainly. Yeah, he, he seemed happy with what we proposed. He stood on his back porch and the top of the post wasn't visible. And then we, uh, subsequent to that uh, discussion, added, added a burn. So that there could be, <laughs> there could be no. Uh, right. So you couldn't see it in the field, but based on their analysis, you should be able to see it, you know, like, the practical top, issue was tippy, you couldn't tippy, tippy see it in the field, but the topography and, and, the, and the cross sections that Sarah did said that, well, you should be able to see that. So to avoid all doubt, we, we put a berm right there and some plantings on it so, so you couldn't see it. So he was happy without that, but again, just we were wanting to be belt and suspenders. So Mr. Chair. Yes. In connection with that, I did send an email to Mr. Goldstein, uh, resident of 48 Bow Street, and he responded back that he was satisfied with everything um, that he discussed with you guys. Thank you. Very satisfied. Great. So, so, so where's the berm going on that, as far as? Yeah. Can you see the green? Okay, yeah. So the, the blue represents the solar panels over the canal. The green is what we've added for berms, vegetated berms. Um, and uh, you may be looking at on your copy, it's a little far, but you can see the existing and proposed tree lines. So that area, there's some um, selective clearing associated right. between um, the properties and the, and the canopies, just because of the weight, the direction it needs, you know, um, fall hazard from the trees and shade management so that it's not directly shading the panels. And because there's some selective clearing, we've decided to add that, increase that topographic elevation. 
We originally, you recall the discussion we had, it was our contention that after we selectively clear those areas, the understory is going to come back more uh, fuller, basically, and be a more effective visual screen. But, you know, Member Bogart pointed out that that would take time. You know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be an effective screening uh, solution on day one. So what is an effective screening solution on day one is a berm. A vegetated berm, so that's the route we went. So now the understory will come back and thicken up, like it, it all, like it always, like we suspected it always will. But in addition, there'll be a vegetated berm, so that there can be no you should. So the berm ends before his property line, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it actually. Yeah. Did it extend like if you extrapolate middle? his property line, the berm would actually go a little past it. Okay, because I know those. One of the questions is if you could look to the right. Yeah, so that berm that's why we did it, it because he, he could walk to the left part of his yard and yeah. look right. So yeah. we kind of wanted to, you know. Okay, yeah, that, that was, that was yeah. I know, it's suggested. Okay, perfect. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. That's good. And it was, I mean, if we're going to build a berm, we might as well make it comprehensive, right? So, right. And then arbitrarily here, build it 20 more feet this way just to, so we did, we took a. <laughs> We added, we added a cross section from his lot over to we had to delete it. Oh, that's right. You pointed out that we, we because we cut the canopy off, we, we removed the cross section from his house. But in hindsight, that was probably not smart. So we added it back in. So now you can see what his uh, view shed would be. And you can see that his view shed is interdicted by a, a berm and planting. So. And then those other homes on Bunny, Bunny's Way? Is that what it was? Bunny's, Bunny's Road. Bunny's, Bunny's Road. Yep. It, there's a berm going there as well. So it's a it's actually a, a, a handful of uh, screening solutions. So there is a there is a berm, um, a vegetated berm, and a fence um, to do the same kind of 100% absolute screening on day one. But in addition to that, we're we're doing some plantings in front or between the homes and the berm just to break the berm up visually so that a butter's not looking at an earthen berm, vegetated berm. Or the, the fence. The fence. I mean, you mean in, the fence. in front of the fence, right? And then we're also planting up on the on the property line at Bunny's Road, doing some selective plantings. And I think they're they're on the cross sections. There's an actually mm -hmm. there's a sheet with a detail. Um, it's in your it's in your. I think it's the. It it's the very last page. It's C two five. It's the very C, last one. C C two point seven. Yeah. The very last sheet shows like a bunch of selective plantings. So we're doing a combination of things, firm fence and plantings. So that house that we had looked at, I think it was the gray. Yeah. Boom. You'll, between him and the project will be right out of the property line, there'll be plantings, and then right at the project, there'll be firm and a fence. Okay. And that's what he'll see. He can't see past that to the solar. Yeah. So that was really the only one that had the direct. Yeah, but we, there. you know, that's what it looked like on site, but right. by their um, engineering, there was actually more folks that had technically of uh, you should so we solve their okay. issue too because again it's it was all at least partially instructed but just to right. be and again most of the project was going to the right so they were actually going to still look out at they were just going to see the canal work still see bogs but to the right is where the project and that'll shield that yes right yes okay so uh hanging hang tom all right but this she shows kind of the zoomed in version of the added berms and plantings along with the planting key and plan that shows species, number of plants, et cetera, as well as the sizes. So what I was just describing, so here's Bunny's Road. So we've got some plantings proposed here. Here's that that one, what was it? The one we saw was 68 um, with the blue shutters? Yes. So that's the, um, Mr. Hoffman, This is the, that's the house that you can see from the site, the, the blue shutter, 68. Six, okay. So you can see for, for to, to mitigate his view shed, there's some plantings right here on the property line, on on, the, on our, um, on Make Pieces property. And then there's also a berm and a fence between him and the project. Perfect. And there's, there's plantings in front of the fence over there as well. So there's plantings by the property line, there's plantings before the fence, then there's a berm and a fence. So that you don't. We, we dare anyone to see that project. <laughs> <laughs> so as I've said, they've thought about this long and hard and looked at it from, I think, every single angle. <laughs> every single um, butter, that's for sure. Yep, uh, particularly with all the spots that we noted in our site visit and throughout the process and have really 
done a good job to incorporate multiple elements for screening. That's all I had for an update. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? No, I guess the only thing we would we would uh, we would throw out there is you know we're like we've said all along we're locals, so we're we like to be proud of the projects we get permitted. We're going to be here for a long time. So if there's anything we if the board feels we have we feel that the project is 100% compliant with the bylaw that it's we've we've designed this project to be fully compliant. So if the board feels that we haven't met that standard in some regard, we'd love the opportunity to fix that um, before you vote on it. Um, so that's the only thing we would put out there. Okay, thank you. Just Any questions? Oh, Jim. Just a quick question. Um, in the last peer review letter from Fessner O'Neill, mm -hmm. it mentioned the possibility of need uh, for a waiver um, for where the overhead wire um, for may or may not be necessary, but they thought that you should ask for the, and recommended that you just to request the waiver just in case, you know, based on what your, your dealings with Eversource is, um, that you may just have that waiver in place. Uh, so I put that in, in, in the. I, I agree, Mr. Walter. I think that's, I think it's appropriate. The, the, the number of overhead poles will be a handful up by the easement. Everything else is underground. So if there's a, if, if there's a waiver that's required for that handful of overhead poles up there in a, like at an interconnection point, then yes, we would like to request it. I think we did request it already okay. um, in the various iterations for that exact reason, just mm -hmm. in the event that we do need it. Um, and Fuss and O'Neill agreed that it made sense to have that in place should that be necessary. So I think that that would be fine with us. Okay, I just want to make sure that. Thank you for bringing that up. Ten. All right, any questions by any of the board members? Um, I want to thank you for going to 48 and marking those things because I was able to get back out there. Um, and it was, it was very, you marked it really well. Um, I, there is going to be a lot of clearing there. So the, on the, the landscape berm, are there any, I don't see anything marked here. Are you going to do any like official plantings of some sort of trees? Or plants, because in speaking to to the abutter, ideally they would like something that would be forested and growing. They know the undergrowth is going to come back, but in the meantime, is anything going to be planted on that? Because the there's going to be a lot of stuff cut down. But again, totally appreciate what you did. It was very well done. Yeah, we were we were planning on at least a vegetated berm just for stabilization. I think plantings would be more effective between the berm and his lot, like in that, and we're happy to work mm -hmm. with him to do that, mm -hmm. um, versus putting, I think the, sometimes the plantings sure. on the berm look a little yeah. artificial. Yeah, no, that's fine, but. So we're happy to, uh, you know. Seed it. To, well, we're, gonna, we're, we're absolutely gonna vegetate the berm just to stabilize it. Right. So it'll be a grassy berm. Mm -hmm. um, but to, for as far as plantings, to help that understory thicken up, I think it's probably. Well, we, I mean, we had, um, did we have some sort of in there in a previous iteration that I think they just dropped off? That's right. The last plant, we had plantings in there. And so we, we, they just, we got a sidetrack with putting <laughs> the berm in there. And we didn't, we, can, we just need to put those plantings back in. So, yes, we had planned to, and we will. And I think it was rhododendrons or azaleas or something. Yeah, some, some low growing broad. Shade the, right. shade the panels, but that would, you know, that would be, uh, um. So there's not a lot of area in there, just if you see the, so this is, the green is the existing tree line, and then selective clearing in here, berm installation, which, mm -hmm. you know, if you envision a berm, I mean, it's narrower at the top, wider at the bottom, which ends up taking up a fairly good sized footprint. Um, and then the tree line really comes to the back of the berm. So I don't, it may look like there's a lot of trees tagged from the tallest trees tagged for removal. Mm -hmm. um, I just want it to be effective, you know, if we're going to put other stuff in there. And yeah. I, I mean, obviously they're happy to do it. Um, so I think, you know, maybe talking about shrubbery or discuss it with a neighbor, what what works best out there. Yeah. Um, once those tallest trees are pulled out of there and we can see what's down there, the material is put in place for the berm. Mm -hmm. It just, I'm thinking like it might 
not really be that effective, but having like a green background when he's looking out that way, if he can even see through the remaining tree and shrub layer, maybe assess it at that point, mm -hmm. um, or leave it open to discuss with them, or via the via gym, or I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know the best way to we're, to leave we, that. We but they're committed. We, we want the we want the neighbors to be happy, so yeah. we're happy to to work with them on individual. I, I think I think some of these things are really hard to solve, mm -hmm. like here. Right, right. pre-construction. We got easier to solve, like in the field, you're building it, and you talk to the neighbor, and it's like, hey, how about putting that stuff there? I'm absolutely, happy to do it. You know? Yeah, that's that's what we were talking about when I was there. Like, when the trees come down, it'll look different than when you're looking at trees that are tagged. Right. Yeah. So then, how could we add it to conditions or decision that um, they would work with the applicant at 48 Bow to add selective, effective plantings? in front of the berm. I think maybe just that. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds good. Exactly, yep. Above that was easy. Or... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I really, I think it's probably the best yeah. we can do at this point. Yeah. And, you know, they've committed to working with them. I mean, maybe we just call out specifically like low-growing evergreen shrubs or something like that, um, just so it's something that makes sense. Because I think yeah. the understory is going to be more important than trying to get height in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Could you get the last part of that? No. <laughs> We're going to start our 48 bow two. I'm going to need a minute to find something good. Can I get back sure, to you? Sure, okay. Well, yeah, we'll but, just, but it was great just to have something. They had said, you know, we want it to kind of still look forested. So if there can be some stuff with height, um, because it was really well done. So, so something like final landscaping will be reviewed uh, by uh, the abutter house number, w whatever it is, 48. Yeah. And um, and, uh, and and the uh, applicant uh, upon completion of project, uh, something like that. And submit it to the planning board. Yeah. Right. Because you really don't know you know, exactly once you cut the trees down, put the berm up, you don't know exactly what, what that's going to look like or, or how much is going to be visible. So, um, so then how could we write that so more than one tree is planted, but it also wouldn't come back and say you guys need to replant an entire forest? How do we do it so it's not too subjective? So there's a good balance. What's done is needed, and it's not overkill. Jim's good at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I just finished. Smith. Well, I think uh, once the, you know, once these uh, gentlemen get out there and uh, and and meet with the the abutter, uh, once they've cut the trees down and, and done the berm, um, before we. Uh, before we can get a, a permit, um, it, it has to be okay. agreed on uh, with the the, uh, the, the butter uh, about the landscaping. And we get written notice of that. Well, I think to we, know that the butter uh, once they're at that point, they will have presumably already gotten a building permit. Okay. So because they won't start construction until they have their permits in hand. So um, perhaps our final electrical COC. All that, all the plantings. Uh, that yeah, That's I mean, really I think, the sign off. Of yeah, the we can't get final sign off for something like that unless yeah. all of these conditions are met. In okay. particular, so my, you know, try this. The applicant will work with a butter at 48 Bow Street to finalize landscaping screening plan and submit to planning board for approval prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. No. Oh. Prior to the issuance of the COC from the uh, uh, electrical inspector, because that's the one that triggers their um, solar compliance. So does that mean we have to come back to the nope. planning board, or do we just work through? You just work the through, the, through the plan. I get that all done, and as long as the uh, abut is okay and stuff. So when Steve goes out to do the final on the solar COC, mm -hmm. before he can issue the COC and get it to the building commissioner, he's got to meet all those requirements. So maybe maybe it says instead of planning board approval or coordination with the 
director or something like that. Because planning board approval to me means we're coming back before this body. In a Would love year. to see you. I know, I know. It's the Tuesday night, but okay. um, <laughs> just just so we're all clear and like yeah. what how it's going to function. Yeah, to to work with uh, the staff. planning director and staff. Yeah, I mean because we're in contact with right. Jim basically every day. So and we <laughs> don't one project or another. Field there again. <laughs> We've already been there two or three times. Yeah, it's a nice place to visit. Yeah. All right, so we'll try it again. So the applicant will work with a butter at 48 Bow Street to finalize landscaping screening plan and submit to planning director for approval prior to issuance of a COC for electrical inspector. Yep. Does that work? That work? Yep. Everybody? Excuse mm -hmm. my name. What is COC? Certificate of Compliance. Okay. It's a specific document that has to be submitted to Eversource for them to tie in. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just okay. have that spelled out. You good? Out. I think okay. I'm good. Does that work for everybody? And you got good notes in there? Well, yes. Okay. Okay, any other questions by planning board members? They, they, did, a great, a, they did a great job. I want to thank you for that. Thanks. I do like the cross sections that you did. That was good. That was very helpful. Yeah, all the other developers are going to call us, yelling at us now for <laughs> setting the bar too high. <laughs> I'm going to say to the public, all you people that are coming before us, take new standard. Yeah. One more thing. Is it because I had this put in the past? Is there something in conditions just guaranteeing that Bunny's Road is 100% screened before that COC happens? Um, Based on this, it sounds great. Um, I like to get everything in writing. But there's nothing left to, in other words, um, I would submit that what we've presented to you accomplishes that. So our goal is just, to, we have to build it as shown. And if we build it as shown, then the answer is yes. So I think maybe just reference the plan of record with this date. Do we need to specify before the COC? No. Okay. I don't see that. It's the difference is because the the planting down here is not on the plan. Mm -hmm. So that language makes sense mm -hmm. because it, it prompts everybody to make right. sure that happens. This is shown, documented on the stamped. Yeah, I see all the heights. I just want to make sure because 100%. I mean, they have to build it to the plan. Uh, that's approved, Right. period. That's, yep, so. that's one of the conditions they have to build. As the long plan. as it's guaranteed for COC? And then there's a requ uh, requirement prior to completion here before they get the final certificate of occupancy that um, uh, our engineer has to review the project for you know, make sure it's to the as built plans. Okay. All right. Any other questions by the planning board members? Yeah. Okay. We haven't uh, closed the public hearing, so uh, if there's anybody out in the public, out in the audience, and there aren't any uh, that have any comments, seeing none. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a motion to close the public hearing for, um, uh, where am I? Zero Pond, uh, Zero Pond Street. I'll second that. So a motion to second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, if those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so that was unanimous. So, now we'll need a vote for approval. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah, yeah, before we do that, yeah, uh, do you want to go over the... Uh... Sure. Do you want me to read the conditions? Yeah, the conditions. Um, and then I... We're not, uh, we, we're not going to be able to sign that tonight, though. No. Uh, we'll have to... So what I'll do in that last piece, and then we'll have, we'll, we'll have to sign it. And then I'll just if get we it out to people. Tonight. All right. So let me go ahead with the conditions. Uh, okay. Condition one: Prior to the issuance of a building permit, a true copy of the recorded decision, as registered at the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, shall be submitted to the Planning and Permitting Department. The applicant shall provide the Planning and Permitting Department with documentation of Eversource's approval to install and maintain the interconnection with the existing utility easement as well as 
as well as any new easements required to access proposed utility poles. The applicant shall provide documentation to the town of, to the town of Eversource's approval of all utility easements and to install and maintain the interconnection. D, the developer shall submit and maintain a ground fuels manicuring and maintenance schedule to the Planning and Permitting Department and the Carver Fire Department. Manicuring of ground fuels should occur twice per year at a minimum and uh, during the growing season. E, developer shall submit an emergency response plan to the Carver Fire Department and Planning and, de planning and Permitting Department. Any outstanding balance of the review and inspections deposit account shall be paid prior to the issuance of a building permit. The applicant shall submit to the permitting department product information for all the major components, including make and model of PV panels, transformer, inverter, mounting system, chemicals for cleaning, and maintenance of equipment uh, be provided as part of the building permit submission. Applicant shall submit the name, address, and contact information for the system installer as part of the building permit submission. Number two, prior to issuance of an electrical permit, the applicant shall provide the board with a decommissioning bond in the amount of 125% of decommissioning costs as indicated in a third party decommissioning study to run with the life of the project. B, the applicant shall ensure compliance with the National Electrical electric code requirements on access, fencing, and security. A statement of compliance shall be submitted to the building commissioner and planning director by the electrical inspector. Uh, final electric, electrical line diagram stamped by a, professional, by a licensed professional engineer shall be submitted to the town with the building, per, building permit submission. Number three, the project must be constructed as approved in the site plan any other revisions will require approval from the board as a modification of this decision. Number four, the applicant shall conform to the recommendations of, of the Carver Fire Department found in two comment letters dated December 3rd, 2019 and January 21st, 2020. The Carver Fire Department must approve in writing any modifications to its recommendations. A, in accordance with a CFD letter dated January 21st, 2020, all access roads shall be at least 12 feet wide and cleared of obstructions by two feet on both sides, be constructed of an all-weather surface, and be maintained for unimpeded travel of emergency vehicles. In addition, 16 feet of vertical clearance is required for large emergency vehicle access. B, the applicant shall work with the Carver Fire Department regarding location of gates and arrangements for lock boxes. C, the applicant shall install signage consistent with requirements for photovoltaic arrays and submit a detailed sign package as part of the building per per permit application. Number five, the applicant shall adhere to the Conservation Commission Order of Conditions, Mass DEP file number 126-587, and special ongoing conditions dated uh, August 21st, 2019. Uh, the Conservation Commission shall approve any modifications to the order of conditions and special ongoing conditions. Number six, clearing limits shall be marked in the field prior to clearing and the planning board notified to allow them to, uh, the opportunity to verify clearing extents prior to beginning clearing activities. Item number seven, the applicant shall provide a final con construction period pollution prevention in erosion and sediment control plan to the planning permitting department prior to commitment, commencement of construction. Number eight, dust control is required during construction and the roadway apron is to be kept swept and clear of any dust, dirt, or debris. Number nine, construction equipment and trucks shall not operate idle or operate on site prior to 7 a.m. Uh, best efforts shall be made to limit construction noise on Saturdays and Sundays. Number 10, prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy and use, A, the applicant shall provide training to the fire department for mitigating emergencies on site. B, the applicant shall provide a landscape maintenance agreement uh, between the solar company and abutters to the planning and permitting department. C, 
the applicant shall obtain a written acceptance of the final condition of access roads from the fire, Carver Fire Department. D, as built plan, plan shall be submitted to the town's engineer and permitting department in both electronic and hard copy form prior to the final inspection. E, in accordance with section 3180 compliance of the zoning bylaws, the town's engineer shall inspect the project to ensure that it has been completed in compliance with the approved site plan and, and its conditions. 11, the applicant shall provide the Carver Planning Department with an annual report certifying compliance with the operation maintenance plan and providing annual generation of the facility uh, in accordance with section 3580.43 Operation maintenance plan shall include a schedule for maintenance and inspection activities. Uh, number 12, the applicant shall provide the planning permitting department and Carver Fire Department with updated contact information should there be a change in ownership <coughs> in or management of the solar system, should be solar array system, uh, with 30 days of any change. And that's it for the conditions. Oh, in the last one, excuse me. Uh, the applicant will work with the butter at 48 Pond Street, uh, Bow Street, to finalize landscaping screening plan and submit to uh, planning director for approval prior to the issuance of a certificate of compliance uh, by the electrical inspector. Anything else? Two questions, page two, one, two, three, four, fifth dot. It says two comment letters from Carver Fire Department dated December 3, 2019 and January 21, 2019. Should that be 2020? Should be 2020. 2020. So, you want page two or three? Yeah, page two, two one, two, three, fifth dot, fifth bullet. Mm -hmm. And then my other question, and it could be accurate though, page three, second bullet from the bottom, the project has adequate street frontage on Wenham Road of 588.17 feet and 183.68 feet on Wenham Road. Is that Wenham Road twice? Should it say Wenham Road twice? No, it's so, a, just the once. So is the other one like, should one say Pond Street? Like No, no, that's just a duplicate. Because it's 588 feet and 183 feet. So what should that say? Just because. So uh, no, there's two frontages on Wenham Road. So one's okay. 588.17, and the other one's 183.68. Okay. And then there's another one that's smaller, but yeah. these are the two okay. that meet the the zoning front. Okay, I didn't know if the street should be changed. Okay. Cool. It's such a huge property. It touches yeah. like every street in Carver. Yeah. yeah. The two separate frontages are shown here. It's a, we won't use this. There's no. There's no uh, access road there. Yeah, no, just the way it was written, I didn't know if I one street should have been different. So, okay. That's all. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Jim, if you need to add the date to the site plan that you reference, it's the one I just handed out. Uh, I think January 23rd is the revision date, or final revision date. In the landscape plans that are still rolled are 124, January 24th. All right, so the base plan set, which was originally October 15, 2019, as amended at what date? January 23rd, 2020. And those are the copies that. Jim has one. I've got a big one. Okay. So if those just make their way back to the permitting department for the file, that'd be great. You can keep the little ones. <laughs> so these revised ones, was that, was that what those, those plantings you had spoken about that were omitted by accident? Was that on this one? No, it was from this planting. So that, it, okay. Yeah. For the 48 Bow Street area, mm -hmm. they're right. about, yeah, they're not in the design plans; they're in the landscape plans. Okay, landscape. Um, they hired someone else to do the design plans, and then we did the landscape plans. So, just for the record. <laughs> so, 
12 percent. So that's 13. Mm -hmm. So you get the. <laughs> and then the, just a question regarding the plan sheets. Um, oh, these are the sight line sheets. These are all January 24, 2020. And then the landscaping. Oh, the revised sheets, those are C202, 204, 206, and 207. Yep. Those are dated January 23rd, 23rd, 2020. Yep. And those are the Western and Sampson That's sheets. right. Okay, so we got that. We got that one. And then we got the revision to the basic plan set. Okay. I think we got it. Mr. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the uh, solar project for Zero Pond Street as presented with the conditions that were presented. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? All right, so it's unanimous. Okay. And that, let's see, uh, one, so that was with with that Kelly. was with Kelly because yep. uh, okay. Kevin's not here tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. I, I just you before much. you go, um, I, I just that was the most <clears throat> thorough uh, time we've had out there. The plans were excellent. You did more than than uh, than has been done previously. Um, We've had some other good read, ones too. You, 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 you read the planning board's thoughts uh, with these elevations, and I appreciate the. the I went out in the field twice. Um, I got some exercise, plus I, I get to see the project, so it, it was great. So um, uh, you did a very thorough job, and I, I thank you for that. Mr. Chair, through you, just a little information on though for, for your contractors when they come out. The significant changes in the 2020 National Electrical Code, especially for large ground mount solar array projects. We already, already, already have flagged our electrical engineer. Uh -huh. You mentioned that. It's, so I'm waiting for a summary report on what those changes are. It's significant. Well, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. We really appreciate it. We're, we're excited about the project, and we're glad thank you to come to a uh, I don't get a unanimous vote. It makes us uh, makes us feel like we did a good job. So. Thank you very much. Thank you very okay, much. thank you. Good night. Head down the stump. Oh, so uh, we'll we'll have to sign that during the week. Right. I can either you know let you know when it's ready and then have you come in or I can bring it to you. Okay. It's dangerous. Oh, it's not too far away. Um, so, Jim, you can just shoot me an email when that's ready and I can come. Pick it up. Or you can email me a copy once it's. Uh, um, if you could also email me a copy of the letter from Bob Francis on the rear lot discussion, that'd be great. Okay. And it just, you can just let me know when you send it down to the clerk's office just so I can keep track of the period. Oh. All right. Sarah. So next uh, on the agenda is an application of a clean energy company and that and this particular one was at zero snap it road and um i believe this is going to be uh they're not appearing tonight and uh it's going to be continued to february 11th that's correct this is where they had the meeting with mr perry uh, mr shanahan met with mr perry um i believe it was myself and uh chairman were also at the meeting uh, Mr. Perry kind of offered a bit of a solution uh, that Mr. Shanahan was going to take and uh, revise the plans to accommodate that. Although Mr. Perry did heavily caveat that, that he still has to run it past his wife and he still has to get the approval of his in laws. So uh, we're still waiting to hear if, you know, if Mr. Shanahan has has completed those plans and met with the Perry's yet, I'll, I'll have to reach out to them and see where they're at with that particular project. 
have they met with the conservation? Because I know part of their moving panels around was going to involve conservation. Do you know, has he met with them yet? I'm not sure if they met yet, but I think he did have a conversation. He tried to make a phone call to uh, Brooke, so I'm not. I'll have to follow up with her to see where they stand uh, if he's filed something with the conservation commission. Because you know, before they finalize plans, I would assume they want to make sure they're okay with the conservation version right. what they're what they're trying to do. Yeah, that was my understanding too. I just want to make sure that that was the next step I thought was I had to talk to conservation to make sure the proposed changes were covered by them. Right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to continue the public hearing for Zero Snap at Road to February eleventh at seven o'clock. Second that. Motion second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and so that's it for uh, solar hearings for this evening. We'll go on to other business. Uh, planning board member notes. Any of the planning board members have anything that they want? I just have one, Mr. Chair. I'm going to make it public that uh, it's election time. I believe I'm up this year. I will not be seeking re-election. Um, my time is done. With a new job and everything, I just don't have the time to dedicate. And I don't think it's right for the applicant or this board if I can't make the site visits because of my obligations. So we'll put it out there for people to uh, throw their hat in the ring. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, generally, uh, generally, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, usually, the it gives. Uh, semi-permanent uh, member uh, to become a per permanent member. But then also, I guess, uh, other people too, could, then we'll still need another person anyway, no matter what, yeah. what happens. I just wanted to get it out as soon as I made my decision, mm -hmm. which well, thank you for was not doing likely. that, yeah. It gives everybody, and especially the people in town, uh, something to think about. Because we will need a, another member. Yep. <laughs> we just gone. We just went through this. Inga Kelly here, and uh, with you departing. I, but you're on so many other boards, so um, stand by. <laughs> we'll, see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right. Uh, thank you for for that information. Yep. Will. Anybody else? I just want to hope Kevin Robinson, our fellow members, doing well in recovery. And hopefully, he comes back soon. Will. Thank you for your time. And yeah. Well, we haven't got to that point it's not yet. Over yet. <laughs> <laughs> we still got some more to do. Right. At least another five solos, right? Mm. Absolutely. I I just have questions. I don't know if I should if it's under this part of our agenda. Or... Go ahead, give it a try. Okay. So brought a couple people have asked me in on the dual purpose solar projects are being presented in town. <clears throat> I know there's been talk about it's so new people don't know if the crops are actually going to grow properly. So it's brought, someone asked me and I didn't have an answer, what if after one season they find out the harvest isn't good? Well, whatever it is, cranberries, raspberries, you know, rhubarbs, whatever, and they find out they can't grow anything under solar panels. Does that change it from a dual purpose solar project? Well, under the language, Jim, uh, from the state for them to meet the requirements, they have to be able to produce a crop. If they don't, then they don't meet the requirements for the, um, the state. So that monies that are be coming in from the state and stuff will have a detrimental impact to them. Now, for us, as a planning board, we look at the project as it is today, that it has to meet the requirements. And there's a, um, in most of our decisions and all of our decisions, there's always a, a mechanism or a condition that they have to meet. If they don't meet a condition, they have to come back to this board. And the board could have the right, in my opinion, to revoke that special permit because they're not growing a crop. Is, is there a check, check and balance, maybe not the right word, that a year later to find out if that crop was actually growing 
Well, they're supposed to put, they're supposed to submit to the state that they're producing the crop. Okay. It's part of their application. Yearly, do they have to do that? Yearly. Right, right. If yeah. I understand it correctly. Right, right. And that actually backed up. So, um, Brooke Monroe invited me on a kind of a site visit over the 13 gate, which was a project that was yeah. approved before my time. And just to kind of show what they were doing over there, because they, they're starting to prepare the area where they're going to have the crops under the solar panel. And Ian Ward was there kind of um, uh, discussing the project, and he more or less backs up you know, what he said, backs up what Will's said about that. There's um, uh, the, you know, both the cranberry industry as well as the UMA, uh, UMass Extension um, are heavily involved with this project. Um, and it's something that, you know, these groups want to see succeed because it's really important to the, you know, especially the gram cranberry growers that this is successful because this brings another source of revenue, um, you know, for them uh, when there's, you know, tough markets for the cranberries. So that it's heavily regulated. And then the other piece of it, the other um, <coughs> component are the financiers of these projects. So if, if it doesn't work out, then the people who are financing the, uh, the project won't get repaid. So that's that's another incentive. So that's all part of it. So you have the financing part of it, then also the state regulatory structure that is requiring it. And so they're working in, you know, so for example, 13 Gates, um, they provided us with a list of the crops that they're gonna try to grow. And so these are all, Kind of crops that have been vetted to you know need less sunlight than you know say other types of crops and so they're going to start off you know you said with the gate street project the first year they're going to grow i think it's um, rye which acts as a kind of a natural um, fertilizer for the site so it will grow and then they grind it up and you know it adds to the the base you know with the soil and then a year from there, then they'll start their crop growing of their regular crop ro rotation. And so they're constantly evaluating different types of crops that will, you know, grow in a more shaded environment than, say, you know, traditional crops grown in a traditional uh, agricultural area. I just didn't know if every year someone was checking that, or if they have, yeah. to, if they have to check it, I should say. And the if the... And if the board like, because um, I asked uh, Ian Ward if he knew someone who could maybe can kind of come in and speak to that, and he was suggesting, I think it's Brian Wick, who is the head of the Cranberry uh, Growers Association, or director of the Cranberry Growers Association. So he's suggesting maybe have some come in and then, uh, you know, present to the, you know, the planning board and, you know, answer questions about some of these issues that are going on. But it's something that... Everybody wants to, everyone who's involved in the industry wants to see work. They don't want to have it fail. So I know there's a recent article that came out that I told everybody that now they're looking at the cranberries that are sold on color and they're concerned that the panels will not make the berries as red. So therefore the crop won't be as valuable and this whole set of, I mean, it's still a, a new thing nobody knows. Right. It's still so new. But again, if someone asked me, I didn't have an answer for it, so I think I'd bring it before the board to find out. Well, another thing that might I suggest that in our conditions, we put a yearly report of the crop. It has to be submitted to... Yeah, I just didn't know if, that, if we had the time. jurisdiction for that or if that was someone... We can condition anything. ...through the, like, who polices that. What do mean? I think Sorry. we may already have a condition in there. State, you know, because it's supposed to be... Check the crop yearly or... Well, to respond to, on the Gate Street project, I asked that question of the applicant, and I remember the response he gave was he wasn't entirely sure at that point, but he was under the impression that the state was randomly going to pick some to audit every year, that it might not be everybody every year, because I had that same question. might have changed since then because that was early on, but I had that same concern, and he said it wasn't going to be everybody every year. Hopefully that's changed.
Okay, it's just compliance with the operation and maintenance plan. But we can add a condition to deal with the agricultural reporting that we get a copy of that report. And actually, I cited the uh, Conservation Commission Order of Com Conditions, which has that as a condition. <laughs> so they have to comply with the Conservation Commission Order of Conditions and the Special Orders and Condition, and that's one of the conditions in that Conservation Commission uh, condition. I'm trying to tighten it up a little bit. Well, it's so new, and it's changing all the time. And stay with the state. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, plan of director notes. So um, we had, uh, a, so the developer of, um, what's this project called, uh, Weathervane, which is uh, Patriot Pines. Patriot Pines, but now they changed the name to Weathervane. Um, they're proposing changes to their phase two project. And one of the things they're looking into um, is uh, to, uh, this transfer of development rights program. So they have uh, their property that has some, they have a number of affordable units that are acquired as part of the inclusionary zoning ordinance uh, or zoning bylaw. And I believe it's six that they have to provide with, with their project. And uh, but under a change in state rules, they've eliminated, um, before you get age restrict, but now you can't age restrict on those affordable units. But the rest of the development's gonna be over 55. So they thought it'd be better if they could transfer those six units elsewhere um, as part of a TDR program that's in our, both our bylaws and also into our uh, master plan. And they have a site on Silva Street that they're looking to transfer those development rights to. And then um, as part of a kind of a development um, in accordance with the, with the town's master plan that calls for a higher density along the Route 58 corridor. So they came in just to kind of give a presentation um, on, I think it was last Thursday. Uh, Bruce was there, myself. Uh, Bob Francis, the building inspector, and also Michael Milanowski, the town administrator. So they just kind of gave a presentation of that, and then uh, the town administrator and the applicant decided that um, they would like to have a couple meetings, not before the planning board, but one with the board of selectmen on February 25th, where they would kind of give a presentation um, on their project just to get it out in the public which will be followed up by a, a public uh, charrette or gathering to where they would present the plan to the general public and then try to answer questions at that, in that form. Uh, just so they get a sense from the community as to what the reaction would be, uh, if people would be supportive or uh, non-supportive, uh, so that when they do apply to the planning board, they'll already have, you know, kind of shape the project uh, better so that they don't end up, you know, coming to a planning board public hearing and then, you know, get blasted out of the water. People don't like what they see. Um, so that's kind of what's upcoming. Uh, the problem is that the Board of Selectmen presentation is on the 25th of February, which is also a planning board meeting night. Um, I could talk to the town administrator, see if we can coordinate so that Maybe the first half of the planning board meeting could be up at the Board of Selectmen. They would put this presentation at the very beginning of the meeting so that the board could hear the presentation and then we would go down to our meeting room and continue with the regular planning board meeting at that time. Uh, so I just want to put that out there and just, um, you know, I'll, I'll check with the, with the uh, town administrator to see if that's something that's doable and I can report back at the February 11th meeting. And then the other thing I've kind of been working on, um, I have a deadline of Friday is to, um, you know, go through and do the um, uh, zoning amendments for the town meeting. So I've, one of the things we had to work on is uh, change in flood insurance map. So I've completed that. 
the next item is uh, the solar bylaw. So um, there was some reorganization and then creating equalization between conventional and dual use. Because last year at town meeting, there were some changes that were applied only to dual use that were not made for conventional. And that's you know, kind of created some confusion with some applicants. So try to make them kind of similar. And then, um, uh, so I'm trying to get all that. One of the changes would be to look at access versus having strict frontage. Um, you know, for the uh, for the access to a solar site. So, I'm kind of drafting this up, and then Friday we have to submit it for advertising, so that in four weeks we can have a public hearing on it. Uh, so, uh, that's what I'm kind of working on, trying to get that. So, and then there's two other things I'm trying to work on. One is the uh, uh, accessory dwelling unit uh, bylaw to broaden it up. Right now, it's restricted to elderly over 55 or um, handicapped persons. This would open it up so that there's no restrictions on it in terms of who's living there. And, um, you know, it's another opportunity to provide housing for people who need it. Um, and then what was the other one? Uh, making some adjustments to the uh, dwelling units over commercial structures. Right now requires uh, TDR credits in order to do that development. So I was thinking about adjusting it so that um, the applicant pro can propose uh, the actual outright purchase of either land for conservation, uh, conservation easements, or some other mechanism similar to that that they can present to the board as an alternative to uh, transfer development rights. So that, um, you know, right now we don't have any we do have a project that's coming on board that's proposing transfer of development rights, but that won't be, you know, that's still in the pipeline. And, you know, we have this other project that's kind of ahead. So we're trying to see if we can help, help this particular owner by making adjustments, and then it will apply to everybody, uh, any other development out there uh, to do that. So. so then I'm going to reach out to you to talk about the sign one that I wanted a placeholder for, because we haven't worked on any language about that. So. Right, so that yeah, that's a challenge because um, it just had a little convergence of multiple deadlines thrown at me, and um, haven't had a chance to even look at that. Uh, so, well, I can I can send you something that I draft up. Okay. And then with your guidance, you can tell me how thorough it needs to be mm -hmm. by Friday. Okay. Okay. All right, because my understanding that once we get it advertised, and then the Planning board opens a proper hearing, then it's open to people to come in with changes, and so uh, the real work will occur yeah. later. Later, but it's just this deadline for. So then I will get Friday. something to you, and right. you can just confirm that it's enough to get us to the public hearing. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, great. So I think that's what we need, just enough to get to the public hearing. And Got it. Work on it from there. And I think that's pretty much it. There was just one other thing. I know that I, uh, when we were talking uh, last week about the transfer of developmental rights, you were talking about maybe having somebody come from SERPED because oh, yeah. it, it, it isn't a straightforward thing. It, it involves sometimes a little math. Um, so I know we were talking maybe somebody from SERPED to come to uh, for a discussion. Right. Do you have you done anything with that? Or? I haven't. Well, I haven't outreached yet, but I can do it. Um, when would you like to have it? Because uh, we can try it for February, but uh, so maybe the better day would be the 11th versus the um, 25th, because the 25th is going to be a little complex if mm -hmm. we uh, have that go to that presentation, or we could do something in March. Whenever, at, at your earliest convenience, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, if we can make it to the selectmen's meeting, and uh, and and see uh, the proposal. So maybe or, uh, do you want to do it like the first meeting in March then? Yeah, if that works okay. out with everything, I guess that would be fine. It, it's going to hit us uh, one way or another, I believe. You know, no matter if it's a simple project or a complicated project. 
So, by the, yeah. Mm. But then we'll know <laughs> what the full impact is. Right, yeah, we, and we just don't know right now. Okay, thank you. All right, we have the minutes of January 14th. Has everybody had a chance to look at those? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, the only thing I had is at the very end on the motion to adjourn, um, you have me down twice, Mr. Sinclair Sinclair. <laughs> okay. That's the only thing I saw, but other than that, I didn't make a motion Mr. to. Mr. Walsh actually noted uh, I have locust instead of locust. Yeah. So. Make a motion to approve as amended. A second. Also, and the, uh, and the attendees, we have James H. Jen Bogart again. See, it doesn't show up on mine. Does it? Remember, okay. we talked about it at the last meeting. It's yeah. not on mine. Yeah, no, you're, it was okay on mine because it's that enable editing, don't enable editing mm -hmm. thing. There's just too much. Yeah. Forget what I just said. Yeah, it's, it's wonky, Jim. So we had a motion to, and do we have a second? Yeah, Jim. Give a second? Okay. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's unanimous. Motion to adjourn. Well, our next meeting date, <laughs> before, before we are, our next meeting date will be February 11th. Now, we have the motion to adjourn. Sec second. We have a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, good night, everyone. Thank you.